Welcome everybody to our show. This is Custom Fab Garage on our channel Octane TV on YouTube. Make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe button. And on top of that, make sure that you hit the notification bell so that you can get all the new content that comes out weekly and even every day. Today we're gonna to be doing this 2012 Chevrolet Corvette. This is a Grand Sport. And then we're gonna be taking this prehistoric radio and changing that with something with 2021 technology and adding a rear view camera so he can see out of the back of this thing. Okay, what we're gonna do with this radio, when we go to first start taking it out, is we're gonna basically pop this bad boy up. We're gonna take all these torques out right here. That way we can take this lid off. Then we're gonna pop these bad boys out. We're gonna take those out of there. That way we can get to this part right here to take off. After that, we're gonna remove this part here, and there's two bolts on this side over here. That's the gist of trying to get all the bolts out so that you can get this whole entire plastic piece off. Because this plastic piece is very large and very difficult to get off. So on these bolts right here, you're going to be a T15 Torx to take all four of these off right here. One, two, three, four. Got that removed. You're going to want to take your, your pick tool and come right up in there. Just go in there and pop that bad boy out like we did right here. And this will pop out. And then we're gonna to wanna to take this out right here. I believe it is the same. Let's test it. Yep, T15. So now we have both of our T15s out. We got our T15s here, and there are other T15s for the, you know, the upper part here. So now we're gonna take this part off. Basically it kind of slides up. And then that's what basically we'll take this piece off here and then once we get this removed off we're going to show you where the bolts are here's the clips so you can kind of see how it pulls up and then once you pull this up you kind of want to pull this e-brake back like that kind of turn this around like this and that's where we need to remove this bolt and this bolt now you don't have to remove this bottom one i believe no, actually on this one you do you have to remove both but that way you get this piece right here moved so you can get this out much easier it's just a lot easier we just take both of them out both of them are seven millimeter now that we've got this removed and this removed and pulled out we're going to go ahead and start pulling up on this and then this part we're going to pull out now that we've got this moved up and this part moved out we need to pull the automatic shifter back to be able to pull this whole bezel out and then we'll have to unplug here and unplug here and unplug here and here and here so you're gonna have one two three here and then one two here and i believe there actually might be a cigarette lighter in here as well a lot of plugs that's what makes it so hard to get out all right this is the hardest one which is the power outlet one it is very difficult because it's on the bottom so you got to get down here and push this bad boy in um, you also have this one which is kind of difficult too they're all not the easiest to get to this is the one for the mode selector this is the one over here for your heated seat the one over here for your heated seat another one for a power outlet and then i forgot to tell you about the hazard switch so those are all the switches and in, in the harnesses that you will have to remove and on the back side that's what it looks like on the top these are basically your middle ones and then here's your underneath ones right here that we can kind of see what you're getting into underneath because it's it's not easy to get this stuff out which is what makes these cars in my opinion hard to do okay next step is we're going to have one two three on each side seven millimeters we're going to need to remove to get the radio and the hvac out you definitely don't need to take this out but you can unplug this and take it out if you want to here's the back of the radio after unplugging it these are all the plugs you're going to have to unplug these are the plugs by themselves. Navigation, antenna, your smaller one, your main harness here, 
and then USB. Now you got everything ready to put the radio in. Okay, these are the parts we're going to be using today, an ADGM1, which is an antenna adapter. And then we are using this dash kit, which is a 953304. It's the uh, Corvette dash kit. And then this is the uh, pack piece, the GM1A-RST. This is the wiring harness. And then we're using the XAV AX5500 double den head unit from Sony. So these are the parts we're going to be using today in this Corvette. Okay, so we have everything wired up. These are the plugs that we will be using. This is your power plug, your main plug, and then here's your speaker plug, which this is amplified, this is non-amplified, so we plug it in. I believe this goes to the external speaker right here. And then I wired everything over to here. This we don't use as rear seat entertainment. You plug this one in. We wired everything up. It's color coded. You're yellow to yellow, black to black. Every single thing is color coded. Um, the only reason I don't have anything on this is the purple with white is it's the reverse. So I'm connecting it to our rear view camera. Um, other than that, we have this piece here, which is for steering wheel interface. The other main part about this is you want to set your dip switch settings here. Like we have four down because it's a Sony. So you want to check the instructions, set the dip switch settings on this. Um, so that that way you make sure everything is correct before you plug it in so your steering wheel interface will just basically auto connect otherwise it won't work correctly but this is the main basic wiring i mean it's all color coded here and the orange is for dimmer if you want to use it i don't but this is everything that you will need here is the radio itself we have it all mounted in we try to do it as flush as possible and then we just use our two screws on each side pretty simple to do on these we've done a thousand of them so looks off awfully OEM when you get this done in here not like awful isn't bad but like it looks very similar to OEM because it, it just looks really clean and nice not just gaudy and like you just slap the double den in this car we have everything plugged in you plug into these two main harnesses here same way like after we got it wired up this is all plugged in and everything's working we plugged in a rear view camera which goes into here uh, we wired in our rear view port, which was the if you go down underneath here, which was the purple with white stripe. And we just plugged in our two USB ports. Everything is working properly and our antenna. That's pretty much it. And then now it's ready to go in. If you do get one of these like I did, you will need to configure this, which means you're going to have to hold this down until it beeps you know, three times and flashes, and then you use a potentiometer to turn down the chimes. The chimes are extremely loud, and you will have to update this on your computer. I would definitely call Pack and walk through the steps. Mine was extremely loud, and my customer would never approve that, so I had to go through that. That's almost taking me two hours. So that is the hardest part of this, is updating this and ch changing the chimes.